Hello everybody and welcome to a new strange LP that I'm going to be starting. This is for Salt and Sanctuary. This is a 2D Metroidvania that's a lot like Dark Souls in a way. And today for this video, and probably for most of the LP, joining me will be Thornbrain. Hello, I'm Salty too. <laughs> we were just talking about Dark Souls 3 before this video, but um... <laughs> this is a guest LP on Thorn's channel, so I figure like... He's interested, and I figure it'd be great to put it there as well, because this game's interesting in a lot of ways, and goofy in a lot of others. Namely, characters look fucking hideous. Yeah. I mentioned this game is a lot like Dark Souls in a way, and you're going to be seeing that a lot. I never used to do this in other Souls games, because I always thought it's going to be my character, I'm going to make it pretty. But in Salt and Sanctuary, I like to make my characters look fucking hideous. Well, does it feel like you have an option to make it pretty? Yeah, so let's give you let's give you a bit of lime green hair there. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm not feeling the mutt chops. Like you dunked your head in toxic sewage. Let's go with the gentlemanly stash and make that also hideous green as well. Eye color. Uh, what do I want to do with this? I'm gonna just make his. I'm just gonna give him no eye color. Yeah. I can't decide that facial design. Is that Japanese puppet or a frog? Frog. Now, one thing I like is that instead of skin color, they just, just tell you which country you're from, and you get a lot of things like basic colors to, um, lizard black. <laughs> Classes determine your starting gear and your starting skills. I always like to start as a certain class because I like dumb things like this in video games. Are you starting as the chef? Yes. Yes. We're cooking up trouble. In fact, you could start with a couple items. The best thing you want to start off with always is Amber Idol for future endeavors, but for this one, I'm going to be starting with the Grasping Rings for things that will be explained later, which is now. So, here's the thing I never saw until starting this recording. There's a challenge button. Hmm. So, we're going to be starting the legacy of a man beating up people with an oar with the story of Ornstein. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Junpei Hyde, for that suggestion. It was the first one, and I was just like, oh shit, I gotta do it. The plot in this game, as it starts off, is a war between two nations, and um, peace is near, but something goes wrong. This is all you're gonna see of this plot. Sort of like Dark Souls. Yeah, actually. Is it better delivered to you the details of the story? Hell or no. <laughs> no way. Literally nothing else you learn about the world. Much like Dark Souls, you learn the world through lore, but I'll discuss this later, but we'll learn in that this game shows us that lore does not equate to a good story. By the way, here's the captain of the ship. Bye. <laughs> There's the ninja of the ship. Yeah, um, the story starts off is that you're on a ship for a diplomatic mission, and then it gets waylaid by pirates, and I'm trying really hard to parry, but parry is just not my fighting style. Now, one cool thing that this game does is that, um, much like beat-em-ups, you have, uh, I don't know if I'd call them target combos, but if you press a certain sequence of combos, you get a different effect. Like... The ore specifically is a spear, and the spear has a unique combo where it does that little uh, twirl thing. And the chef doesn't have enough endurance to do the final hit for that, but you end up doing like a overhead swing with, as your final hit. Now every other weapon has a launcher combo, which is done by light into heavy. In order to do ore spin, you have to do two lights into heavy. By the way, here's the princess. Does she die too? Uh, I'll just say you never see her again. <laughs> that counts, I guess. Yeah, they just shoved in a locker and thrown away. She's dead to you. Yeah, I'm just a chef, dude. I'm here to cook. What am I doing? Here's our first boss. Kind of hard to see because the lighting in this game is goofy, but it's supposed to be a Cthulhu, so I'm going to throw potatoes at it. Uh, I see. I'm not good at this boss, by the way. I'm fucking dead. That boss will instant kill you if it hits you. But, um, you can beat him, you get a Chivo for it. Okay, so it's, a, it's like the demon from Demon Souls. 
Yeah, it's like the Executor, or whatever the hell its name is. And we wake up on a deserted island, alone, with shitty weapons. This sounds a little familiar, honestly. Yeah. You chose or only, does that mean you can never pick up another weapon? Yeah, and I believe I showed this video, but now let's talk to this guy, because this is actually important. The game is called Salt and Sanctuary for a reason. We're going to be seeing the second half of that name set here. You need religion, damn it. You do, actually, because you cannot progress the game with that. Well, technically you can, but um, you can't level up, you can't get healing, you can't do anything without a creed. And here we get to choose between three creeds as our starting lineup. The Scott or the Stab? Well, one of the creeds is literally called the Three, and I don't like him. The Creed is a good beginner guild, but I much prefer the Iron Ones as a starting one. It's no way of the blue. No, these aren't going to work like uh, Covenants and Dark Souls. These are mainly ways of getting different items, different power-ups, and different mechanics through the game. The Iron Ones are interesting because they are a lot more focused on strength of steel, combat, all that stuff. You get a lot of good combat buff items from them, mainly focused on lightning. By the way, the messages in this game are messages in a bottle. Very classic sailor-esque thing. Oh, those, ju those zombies just sounded hungry. <laughs> yeah, they wanted your salt. Either that or my potatoes, I, I really don't know. But yeah, um... Right now, the Chef and the Popper are the level 1 runs because you get no skills whatsoever starting out with them. I just like the Chef because the outfit's funny to me. <laughs> that and you technically start out with less weapons, the Popper starts with a hand axe and a pitchfork. The Chef starts with an iron pot, normally. But now, let's claim our checkpoint. You know, outside in all that fog, your green beard almost looked natural. <laughs> yeah. Now, we claimed a checkpoint before, and it much works much like bonfires. You go there, you'll level up, you'll spend your salt there. You could get your healing items, and you could do another thing there that we won't see for a while, in, but we will see it in this video. Now let's take a look at our items. Potatoes offer no healing benefit, but they're certainly hard. <laughs> Red shards are a shitty healing item. They're limited, but you could buy them, and they heal about a third of the rate of your uh, replenishable healing item. And for the iron ones, it's a baked roll. Very delicious. And yeah, instead of uh, souls or uh, blood tinges, you get bags of salt here. Which I like, because in past cultures, salt was a type of currency. Mm-hmm. Now, I love this a lot. You can only get the ore if you do an ore-only run challenge. And they got a really goofy story here of, sure, it's an ore, but there's a race of people out in the oceans that defend their lives with ores and have their own martial art. Well, yeah, we saw it. It's kind of badass, actually. <laughs> yeah. I had half a mind to name this guy Musashi after the legend, but I thought that would be way too tongue-in-cheek. Also, that's the launcher combo. Every weapon has a launcher combo, but not all weapons are suited to a uh, launcher combat. Namely, things like spears, heavy axes, and heavy maces are suited more for ground combat rather than aerials. Meanwhile, dex weapons such as your uh, cutlasses, your katanas, your daggers, those are way better at doing air combos. Just as an aside, we are streaming this live as a sneak preview, and we do have a question from the chat from Chibi Wisdom. How long is the game, roughly? I would say your first run's gonna take you 15 to 20 hours, just because of, um... A lot of this game is not gonna be so much exploring areas, finding dead ends, and realizing there's nothing there. A lot of this game is gonna be platforming challenges and learning what the game is teaching you in terms of insidious level design. 
like right here. The main theme of the Festering Banquet is going to be learning new enemies and their attack patterns. And the big thing is that they like to place archers on embankments that shoot you while you're attacking. So in this game you learn, oh, staircases block arrows. If I just come in from the ground, I could take on archers really easily. Then you have these guys, which are the Drowned Berserker, which uh, I just kind of chunk because the ore has a really good range. So I could just chump a lot of enemies with it. Is the ore considered a spear weapon? It is considered a pole axe. Ah. Pole axe being a weapon that has both a blade and a spear. And there are spears, there are heavy axes. And here we got a stone merchant. These are one of the things that we could offer up to a sanctuary in order to get NPCs that'll give us services. Not only that, any NPC that we summon to a shrine will give us a region benefit. I didn't give enough time to show it to there on the um, menu, but if we put a stone merchant at a checkpoint, the um, Forgotten Shore and the uh, Festering Banquet will have a gold drop bonus, and you can actually see that on the bottom there. Well, you can see a icon, that's the salt drop bonus from my starting item, the ring. And now for bats. Remember how you mentioned that the ore sucks at air combat? Mm-hmm. I fucking hate bats. They're so goddamn annoying. Because the only thing you could do in the air is either thrust forward or do a down attack, and you just look like a fool. That's a very Dark Souls secret. Yeah. And a very Dark Souls shortcut. Yeah. The uh, Stone Cleric is for all you faith builders. It boosts the power of faith and gives you a shop merchant that gives you faith stuff. But we're a fucking cook. We don't need that. <laughs> Cooks have no faith. Exactly. We believe in the ladle and the pot. Eh, I'll fight you later. <laughs> no. Now, there are actually uh, two numbers down there. White is the salt. What's the gold? The gold. You have two currencies in this game, salt and gold. I'm assuming gold is used for physical stuff and salt you use for leveling up. Yeah, salt you use for levels, and uh, one vendor actually does use salt. It's the blacksmith. Can you guess why? Because this is a Souls game. Guess what you use with with souls and weapons in a Souls game? Find bombs. Yes. Obviously, they're doing it wrong. I discarded my Sheffley ways because um, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. If you're a game developer and somehow watching this LP, I really like long scarves billowing in the wind. <laughs> and that's what this rogue outfit does, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm wearing this. It's a flaw of mine. Is that why you liked Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, yeah, I liked Link with the scarf. Shameful, I know. Grenado, I wonder what that does. He gives you a friend called Grenade. <laughs> yes. Now, that... Obelisk there is something we can't interact with for a good two hours. Wow. I know this because I recorded the videos myself. <laughs> Bandaged Ring is much like the Kling Ring in uh, Demon Souls, however it works a little bit differently. In Demon Souls, if you died, you would lose a set chunk of your health permanently until you kill the boss or used a uh, Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. This game works differently. Instead of losing a set amount of maximum health, if you look right now, I am missing a good one-tenth of my health. That is because I've taken wounds as damage. Every hit you take during combat will reduce your max HP. So it's kind of like when you get different types of injuries in Metal Gear Solid 3. Yes. It's supposed to reflect the idea that this is a long trudge and you're going to be worn down and sometimes you do have to rest at a sanctuary. So I like that system more, but it does have the same issue as Demon Souls' system. Hey look, we got the uh, orange soapstone, I mean the journey bottle. <laughs> I do like that more than just, if you die you lose this chunk of health. Yeah, it feels a lot more organic. Yeah. Now the message system in this game is goofy and fun. You could say it has its own little language, but I've looked over all the little moon runes here and I don't really see a pattern of recognition to work alongside, so I'd say fuck that. 
the message system in this game is nice because people do actually help you out in this game. I have gotten a lot of messages that give me warnings on what to do for the upcoming things. You don't get rewarded for this. No. You don't get free bread rolls, you don't get humanity, you don't get salt, you just... You just get the knowledge of knowing, hey, I'm being helpful, or hey, I'm being a douchebag. Just drop a bottle indoors, beautiful view. Yeah. Welcome to die. Yeah, that would have been a good message, but I'm not clever. Says CR the Mighty in the chat. Now, uh, I was hoping to show off what happens if you get a new weapon, but I haven't gotten a new one yet, unfortunately. Now, that spin combo is really effective if you manage to get it off, but there are very few opportunities that you get to do so, and it makes me sad. No, I don't want to do that quite yet, because that's a boss. If you saw that candelabra just before the ladder, that's an indicator that a boss is coming, and something I actually appreciate. Now, we got a stone blacksmith. The thing about this is that the ore is supposed to be a gimmick run, because if you saw during the list, there were gimmicks of ore only, pot only, and magic only. Magic only is super overpowered. It's not a gimmick run. <laughs> but the ore and the pot are supposed to be joke weapons, which is primarily why I'm doing this. But there are many things you could do in this game that make goofy runs like this very viable. And the stone blacksmith is a good example of this. Just trying to equip stuff here. And here's how you consume salt. You stomp on it. <laughs> I like that. And it just gathers on your clothing, and that's how you hang on to it. Now, offering, uh, as I mentioned before, offering stone NPCs to a sanctuary causes region benefits. The stone blacksmith is attack power. So if you're going to be doing a gimmick run like this, or the pot only run, or the level one only run, you kind of want a blacksmith everywhere. <laughs> so I believe I bought... Oh no, what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be doing a little bit of a, a small grind to get a couple levels in order to show off the leveling system of this game, because it's not organic like it is in the, the Souls games. You don't commit points to attributes just uh, through a drop-down menu. It's a lot more involved, but also kind of shows the lack of creativity on the developer's part, in my opinion. So this is the Tree of Skill. It's, a uh, pretty fucking big. You Yggdras suck. That's a motif that this game uses. So the Tree of Skill is basically a tree of branches that you could go down in any way you see fit in order to do whatever your filthy little heart desires. Every branch goes down a different path. Like, the bottom left takes you to magic, the bottom right takes you to faith. And the top trees are martial, based on heavy, light, or, um, just sword and board. Now, I bet when you first saw that you think, Wow, that is Final Fantasy X as hell, and you'd be right. It is. It takes a lot of inspiration from Final Fantasy X's Sphere Grid. However, there's no real interlacing between the, uh, skill trees. There are one or two branches, like, at one point, the Magic Tree can't go into the, uh, Assassin Tree, or the Faith Tree can go into the Heavy Weapons Tree. However, advanced stuff requires prerequisites, so you can't really exploit the later elements of the thing and do cool stuff like, say, in Final Fantasy X, you could give Titus Waka's abilities. You can't do that in Salt and Sanctuary, unfortunately. Chibi Wisdom has another question. Do the NPCs like that blacksmith stay at one sanctuary, or do they travel with you when you reach a new one? They stay at that single sanctuary, but those stone NPCs are drops and pickups, so you will get more than enough to suit your needs. But if you're like me, you're going to have, like, one or two sanctuaries that are your quote-unquote home bases. And you just do all your prep work stuff there and then just start exploring more. Now here's why I don't like bats. Uh, yeah, that, there's kind of a long wind-up when you're in here. Yeah, the ore is a clumsy weapon. <laughs> Poke, go away. I'm a spear user. 
I mean, if you could call this a spear, and just bopping a dude with a stick. Now here's a variant on the sanctuary. This is effectively a rest stop. You could refill on healing supplies and respawn enemies here, however you cannot level up here. Hmm. They do this because it is a, effectively a checkpoint before a boss, and it's kind of necessary, honestly, with how some of the bosses are located. Speaking of, our first boss. The Sodden Knight is a really tricky boss and kind of rough if you don't know what to expect from this game. He uh, hits hard, he has lightning abilities. And um, if you don't know what you're doing, he will trick you, because much like in Bloodborne, once you get him to a certain point of his HP, he enters new phases, as seen there. Now the thing that bugs me about the Sodden Knight is that he has kind of a, he has a sort of phantom range with his sword. What you see is not what you get, he actually has a little bit of an extra reach with his sword, so if you think it's safe, it's not safe. Oh good. Like right there. Another thing about the Sodden Knight, and most bosses in this game, is that they have fakeouts, like in Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3, where it'll look like they're cooling down from attack and then they'll just continue their attack. Which I think is kind of messed up, honestly. But yes, we killed the boss. I think you mean you salted them? Yes. <laughs> I sanctuaried them. But yeah, the weird thing this game does with level design is that bosses are not impediments. Like, for example, in Dark Souls, the Taurus Demon is a boss that you have to fight in order to progress because it is blocking the way forward. In this game, it's a lot weirder in that bosses possess keys that allow you to go forward. So they put the bosses out of the way to make you explore the area in order to progress the rest of the game. And I don't know if I like that or not. I like the idea that it forces you to explore the level instead of blitzing the area. But I also don't like the fact that it's just off shoved in a corner, not actively being a threat. Yeah, it feels like something that would just be annoying after you've sort of mastered where everything is and you're just going for a fun run. Mm-hmm. And that was the first episode. Next time we're gonna further explore the areas around us now that we've killed the Sodden Knight. I will say the game does look pretty interesting, and I like some of the differences they have compared to the Souls games. Making a comparison, I mentioned this before we start recording, Salt and Sanctuary feels very much like we're going to make a side-scrolling platform or Dark Souls, whereas there's another game, Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight. It's the fourth Momodora. It has a lot of Dark Souls influence as well, but it feels like a more organic influence, whereas this one is trying to be Dark Souls. Yeah. And in a weird way, I honestly think both this and Momodora did the not Dark Souls idea right, because um, everybody goes to, um, fuck, what was it called? Uh, Lords of the uh, Darkness, I think? Lords of the Fallen. Thank you, Lords of the Fallen, where that basically tried so hard to be Dark Souls 1-to-1 one -one and failed miserably. Then you ha There are like two or three other Dark Souls-esque games that I don't quite remember off the top of my head but I feel like this is a good attempt, but you could also tell that their commitment to being Dark Souls kind of caused a couple problems as well, but we'll be seeing that later in the LP. If anything, it's a good start. I'm interested to see where it goes. It's definitely a fun game. There's a reason why I've played it three times and decided to do an or only run. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see you folks next time.